Hi everyone, welcome back. I am doing the video that I always call the best review that I can give, which is an empties video. And the reason why I call it the best review that I can give is that you see the entire lifespan of a product when you empty it. From the second that you purchase it, or in some cases I receive it in PR, to the second that I go to throw it out. And throughout the entire lifespan of a product, your opinion about that thing may change over time. So I've got a ton of skincare, which I feel like I haven't talked about in a while. I've got body care, makeup, and a bunch of hair care as well. So I'm gonna get right into it. A bunch of these things I think are included in the Sephora holiday savings event. So I'll link that below in case you are looking for a discount on any of those things. I think it's October 28th to November 7th. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm gonna start with mascara um, because these are actually all of the makeup items I've emptied and they're all kind of different and I have different opinions about all of them. The first one is the Milk Makeup Rise Mascara. I think this is the second tube of this that I've emptied already. They came out with this earlier this year and it's my favorite of the mascaras that they've done. Their Kush Mascara really wasn't for me and um, I'm so glad they came out with this. So it has this like curved natural bristle brush and this creates a really fluttery separated lash. It's not too wet, it starts out pretty dry and because of that you're able to build it really well and it holds a curl relatively well. I still use my primers with it but I know a lot of people who really like this mascara and I do feel like it is a very buildable, everyday mascara, but you can get volume with it as well. So this was definitely a win for me and I do have a backup of this somewhere ready to go. Then I have the Bare Minerals Maximist Mascara and this actually really surprised me because first of all, the brush on this mascara is huge. I think I did test this out in a trying new makeup like several months ago, but half of the brush is um, bristled and half of the brush has like separated lines. It's kind of hard to describe, kind of hard to show you, but it is a huge brush and I didn't think that it would work for me, but it's a very um, buildable mascara that gives me a ton of length and volume. So if you like a big bad lash, I think you'll like this. And the reason why this works for me is because the brush is so good at separating and moving product through the lashes and it holds a curl well, it doesn't smudge. If you really like drama, I think you'll like this. And it's also a very black formula. It gives you a lot of impact really quickly. Then I have the Isam mascara, and this also really surprised me. I'm telling you, this was a, it's been a good year for mascara. So this one um, has a slightly thinner wand. It's tapered, but it also has separating bristles, and this one builds really, really well. I'm able to get a really controlled application through the lashes, and it holds a curl pretty well. It gives me length, separation, volume, flutteriness, it just does kind of everything that I want it to. And I'm really surprised because Isam is generally known for their tools and their brushes, and they came out with this earlier this year, and it really, really impressed me. I would love to have this in my collection again. It builds both length and volume. Then I have the Clio Kill Lash Super Proof Mascara Long Curling Version. So Clio is a Korean mascara. I picked up a couple of these while I was traveling in Seoul earlier this year. If you have very um, short, fine, straight Asian lashes, um, you will really like this because it's such a small brush and that's what I really liked about it is that you're really able to get into the corners of your lashes. It's not a very fast build, but that's kind of what makes it good for fine lashes. You're able to really control the application and reach into every little corner of your lash line, no matter how small your lashes are. And so this was really great for when I wanted like a very detailed, um, separated mascara look. I finished the Tower 28 Lip Jelly in Chill. This is just their clear one. 
and I love this. I actually emptied it so quickly because I used it as a lip balm. It is that nourishing and moisturizing. Um, I had it in my purse. I had another one in my like bathroom vanity and I already have another one open. So even though this isn't like the most exciting lip product, I actually found it really, really useful and really nourishing on my lips. And then I finished a couple other lip balms. If you can't tell, I go through lip balms very quickly. So these are both from Fresh and they're basically two different versions of a similar product. So this is their classic sugar advanced therapy lip balm. This is their original, but I think it's a mini size. These are so nice. I mean, I've gone through so many of these in my life. They have that like sugar lemon scent and they're very nourishing, very moisturizing. They are a very soft formula, so I always kind of like melt them onto my lips, but they had come out with the night mask version or the lip mask version of that lip balm. So it has the same scent. It's actually even thicker than the Laneige lip mask, which I also love. I've gone through multiple tubs of that. This was a little bit waxier, like, it felt a little bit more like a mask than maybe a lip balm, but that's what I liked about it. And I used it all up. It lasted forever and I used it all up and would totally purchase again. The last makeup item is the Milani Make It Last setting spray. This is the floral version that I think was limited edition for spring, but I've used it all up and this is actually the current setting spray that I'm using right now, just the um, non-scented version. But this kind of does everything that I have always wanted from a long lasting setting spray. It's very similar to like Urban Decay All Nighter, um, you know, those kinds of like the Scandinavia setting spray, those kinds of like long lasting setting sprays. And yeah, it's nice to have a drugstore version. I actually have a bunch of skincare, so let's start there. I've talked about the In Beauty Project Slushy Serum a bunch on my channel. It was so good. This um, is a really interesting gel-like texture. Let me see if I can squeeze any out. Oh, there it is. So it starts out as like a gel, but the second you touch it, it turns watery. And it has antioxidants, it has like yuzu or something in it. It has this really fresh citrusy smell, but um, it gives you a really nice layer of hydration. So I use this in the day as well as um, in the evenings. And yeah, this is a new brand, newer brand that came into Sephora this year. And I'm really glad they did because their price point is so good. It's between like the high teens to the mid twenties, I wanna say. And this is in the Sephora sale, so I would definitely recommend checking it out if you're curious about adding, you know, just a hydrating serum into your routine. I've got a few hydrating essences, toners. The first is the Make Beauty Micro Ferment Essence. I love this essence. It's milky. It has um, a bit more body than your traditional, like, watery toner. Let me see if there's any left in here. It's completely empty, <laughs> but this is a really beautiful, bouncy skin step. It's something that I would use right after cleansing in the evening and before serums. This is something that I think all skin types would love from dry skin to even oily combo skin like me because everyone needs hydration. And this could be a layering step for you. I think even oily skins might find that this is hydrating enough during the daytime under like an SPF or something. It's just really beautiful, milky, calming. I want this again in my collection. I actually am realizing how much I miss it. Then I have the Holy Frog Utopia Microflora Toner. And this contains hypochlorous acid, which is the ingredient in a lot of soothing products. For example, Tower 28's SOS line, their mist as well as their serum has this ingredient. And supposedly it helps with irritation. It helps calm eczema. And I think for me, it did help bring down some redness, irritation. 
I used this again right after cleansing. So actually right after I emptied the Make Essence, I replaced it with this, and this was also lovely. It has a slightly milky quality. I do think this is more watery than the Make Beauty Essence, but it sinks in really quickly. You're able to layer it, multiple skins of it if you want. It's very much in line with like the K-Beauty toner world. It's a hydrating, soothing, calming toner. I've emptied two products from SkinCeuticals. The first is their Silly Marin CF, and this is their, I think it's 10% or 15% L-ascorbic acid with ferulic and Silly Marin, which I think is also includes 0.5% salicylic. But that 0.5% was really nice for me when I was using it this summer, and the summer is when I'm oiliest. It really helped maintain balance in my skin, prevented me from getting too oily, but it's also not such a high concentration that it feels like an acne treatment. It was just enough to keep my skin balanced. It also helped keep my pores clear because you're keeping the oils balanced. So this was a really great option, and if you have oily skin, I think this is a really good vitamin C option for you. Then I have a serum I've emptied several times before. This is the SkinCeuticals Phyto Corrective Gel. This has a lot of botanicals, but the Phyto Corrective line in general is meant to be calming, especially for redness. And if you know me, you know that my skin is redness prone. Um, I'm someone who has a lot of heat in my skin. Occasionally I have like rosacea outbreaks. And this is just a really beautiful, calming, bouncy gel. It has like a, a green color. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I don't know where the color comes from. Maybe the botanicals. I don't know if there's color added, but it's just kind of a fun detail about it. They recently launched a phytocorrective mist, which contains really similar ingredients, but it's obviously in a much lighter mist form. So I've really been enjoying that. I won't repurchase this right away, but it is something I've come back to several times over the years because it does help for for me with calming and hydration. I actually have another SkinCeuticals product. This is their AGE Eye Complex and this is small but mighty. I mean it's the size of a standard eye cream, it's half an ounce, but this is like a very very rich balmy eye cream. So it's like kind of solid when you touch it and then you scoop some out and you melt it between your fingers and it melts down and it becomes like buttery and balmy. And I think this is a really great option for more mature skin, for the winter months, and for nighttime, like if you want something really, I don't know, buttery and yummy around your eyes. I just feel like this is such a rich, beautiful eye cream. I do think it's a bit rich for daytime, um, but if you have dry skin or mature skin, I think you'll love this. And honestly, you need such a small amount. This lasted me like almost a year because you only need a small amount and it melts down and has such nice spreadability. So it's one of my favorites. Speaking of calming, I've emptied another Dew Skin Deliverance Serum. I love this stuff. It's a great one and done serum for when you want hydration, calming. It has a little bit of niacinamide for brightening, as well as CBD, again, for calming. So this is like a great multitasker serum. And I think it's a great example of a product that is higher end, but it's kind of a one and done because it has this great balance of ingredients ingredients and so you don't need to add a bunch of products into your routine unless you're like me and you want to but it does the job of many different kinds of products and I just can't say enough good things about Dew Skin. I love them. I think they're really thoughtfully formulated. I do have a discount code for them if you're curious. I have some skincare that Sean finished and lately he's been stepping up his skincare game which um, pleases me greatly. <laughs> so he emptied the 15% vitamin C clean caffeine energy serum from Youth to the People. And I've actually emptied this too. I emptied one of these last year. And this is a really lovely, hydrating, plumping antioxidant serum. It also has vitamin C derivatives. So if you can't tolerate L-ascorbic acid, this might be something to try. 
and it is um, a really lovely, like bouncy serum. And his skin looked great when he was using it. So um, definitely recommend. And if you have partners out there that, you know, maybe aren't super into skincare, but you wanna give them a well-rounded serum, I, I think this is a great one. He also finished up the Stradia Night Shift, and this is their retinol product. It's a night cream with encapsulated retinol. So, I was shocked because Sean has used retinols before, but I don't know if he's ever like completely finished one. And he went through this and was like, do you have more? And I was like, yes, I do. I think this is a really great um, like starter retinol because it is encapsulated. I don't think it's a super high concentration and it's housed in the night cream like format. So it's rich, it's comforting, it's really moisturizing. So I think that helps buffer some of the potentially irritating effects of retinol if you're scared to start using it. So he didn't even realize there was retinol in here. I think he was just using it as like a nighttime moisturizer and he does have pretty sensitive skin. So I thought that was a really good testament to the like gentleness of Stradia Night Shift. For a daytime moisturizer, I used up the Facile Skin Barely There Lightweight Moisturizer. Facile Skin is actually where I go to get skin treatments done, but they came out with skincare last year, and it's really well-priced and very well-formulated. So it's all pretty much fragrance-free. It's all within the $20 to $30 range. So I think it's very accessible to a lot of different people. They are direct-to-consumer on their website right now. This was a really lovely, uh, oh, I have a little bit left. Lovely, lightweight, basic in a good way moisturizer. It sunk in really quickly. It gave me a lot of moisture, but it wasn't too heavy for daytime. I think it's a great option for like normal to combo skins. They do have a richer moisturizer in their line for dry skins, and I think that's really nice too. Then, Sean also emptied the Ultraceuticals Ultra Calming Moisturizer Cream. And this was a really um, beautiful, there's nothing left, beautiful calming cream. They have the Ultra Calming line in Ultraceuticals, and I think it's great if you are like me, you are eczema prone, you're dermatitis prone, you're rosacea prone. It's simple in its ingredients, but also feels elegant. And I always love a product that comes in the pump with the squeezy tube format. I just think it's the most practical. And um, Sean used this regularly. So anything that gets you using skincare regularly is I think a good thing. And the ultra calming line from Ultraceuticals is great. Another daytime moisturizer I used up is the Kogendo Moisture Spa Gel Rich. So if you find regular gel moisturizers too watery, they just like evaporate off your skin, but you like a lighter texture, this might be one for you. And I actually think even dry skin types would love this because it has this beautiful, there's nothing left. It has a really beautiful, bounce to it and it's definitely a richer gel cream without being a traditional cream um it's also huge this is three and a half ounces it took me forever to get through it's really lovely it's alcohol free didn't have any fragrance it was just a really lovely moisturizer during the day as well as in the evening let's talk about a product that everyone loves but i did not love <laughs> And I'm sad to say this, it's the Inky List Oat Cleansing Balm, and there are many things to love about this. First of all, it's affordable, and it's at Sephora, which makes it accessible to a lot of different people, and I'm really happy to see that Sephora is has been expanding its more affordable, accessible offerings. And I really like a lot of products from the Inky List, and in the beginning, I did like this cleansing balm, but over time, and maybe it's something about the texture change over time, it became a little bit grittier, and I also felt like I wasn't getting um, a full cleanse. Like, it wasn't coming off my face. I sort of felt like it was leaving me with a bit of a waxy residue on my skin. So it did break down makeup, it broke down SPF, and all of that, but I did feel like I was left with 
a bit of residue on my skin after. And this is also so big that it took me a long time to get through and I wasn't enjoying the process of getting through it. So it's just not for me, but I know a lot of people love it. And I can see maybe if you're someone with drier skin than me, that you might love this because that feeling that I experience as something left on the skin might be experienced by someone with dry skin as, oh, it left my skin feeling moisturized and plumped up. So, you know, it could be a skin type thing. It could be a matter of like how long it took me to get through this, but it just wasn't my favorite. Two favorite SPFs in my life, um, the Nivea UV Super Water 50 Gel SPF 50 PA 3 Pluses, and the Beauty of Chosun Relief Sun SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. I've gone through both of these multiple times. They're a little bit different from each other, but they both are sheer, use advanced chemical filters. They're both, or this one's Japanese, this is Korean. Um, the Nivea one I would recommend more for oily skin types because it does have alcohol in the formula. So that helps it set down and have that like quick dry feel. And this is also waterproof. The Beauty of Chosun is more for all skin types except perhaps the most oily. This doesn't have alcohol in it, but it has that lovely spreadability. It's it's fluid, but it sinks in quickly, it's hydrating, and they both give you excellent SPF protection. This next segment is for my sensitive skin babies. I have three um, body lotion slash calming cream products. The first one is more for the face. This is the Indeed Labs 10 Balm, and this is, I think, a ceramide-based balm. It's more of like a rich moisturizer than a balm, like it's not a solid balm. But I really liked this in the winter. I really liked this to buffer if I was using tretinoin and I wanted something richer underneath to add that layer between tretinoin and like my skin. So. If you have sensitive skin and you want something that's like simple, gentle, rich, but heavy duty, the 10 Balm is a great option. And Indeed Labs has a great price point as well. These two are forever favorites. The La Roche-Posay Lipicar Lotion is just a basic uh, moisturizer, but it's rich and it's calming. And I do feel like I'm getting deep, deep moisture. And it's also great for the face. I know a lot of people use this on their face. I've used this on my face. It is on the richer side, but that's kind of what I like about it. And Sean and I both use this all the time. The other item is the Aven Zero Calm AD. And this is a little bit more specialized. So it's richer, it's thicker than this. But I use this specifically on my decollete where I get irritation. Sometimes you'll see I have like redness on the chest. It's rosacea, sometimes I have dermatitis, you just, I just never know. That's like where my skin is the most um, easily activated. So I actually use this every night and I just slather on like a rich layer. And I do think it really helps um, keep my skin barrier soft, healthy, strong. And I do find it helps calm my skin if I'm feeling irritated. So I actually have another one that's open already. So this is what I use on my chest and this is what I use on my body. The last sensitive skin item is the Skin Smart Eczema Therapy Spray. This is another hypochlorous acid product. So it's hypochlorous acid that's like diluted with water. And I spray this on my neck, my back, wherever I experience potential irritation. It does does help um, both preventatively, but also to treat any potential irritation. Um, I've repurchased this many times, and if you do have eczema, this might be something worth checking out. Here's a multi-purpose product that's kind of interesting. This is the Violette Boom Boom Milk, and it's an all-over cream spray. So it's actually a biphase spray, so when you get the full bottle, you'll see like liquid on the bottom and a cream layer on top. You mix it up, and you can spray this on your body, on the ends of your hair, you can use it for your skin, on your face. And this is so yummy. It's like a milky essence, but in spray form. I really loved this. Um, I loved it on my face, but I actually loved it even more on my body and hair, just because it gave me this layer of moisture without any heaviness. So I used this up actually in the summer and I would add it to my legs if I wanted moisture, but I didn't want a layer of lotion 
also great for the ends of the hair. They have um, since come out with a refillable version of this and that also uses recycled packaging. So um, if, you, if you do get it, it won't look exactly like this, but I'm so excited to open the next one because again, it's a really great multi-purpose spray. I also traveled with this and it was nice because I had something for my face, my body, and my hair just to add some moisture wherever I needed it. I used up another box of the Mighty Patch by Hero Cosmetics. These are my current favorite acne patches and they actually replaced my old favorites, the CosRx ones, but I didn't have a new box of this, so I opened some CosRx ones that I had in my stash. And I did remember that I really like these because they're so, so sticky and grippy, more so than the other ones. Um, I don't have a box of these right now, but I'm definitely gonna get my hands on them just because I can notice how much more effective they are because they really, really stay in place. Then I've got a bunch of hair stuff. So from Sasha Wan, I emptied their moisturizing shampoo and their moisturizing conditioner, both of which I love. And I love them so much that I have two friends that have since purchased both of these and loved them. It smells really expensive. It's like salon hair. Um, they're a Swedish brand and they make really beautifully formulated hair care that I feel like not enough people know about. And if you have dry hair, if you have chemically treated hair, their moisturizing line is really, really nice. I also emptied the Sasha Wan dr Dark Dry Powder Shampoo. This is a dry shampoo formulated for dark hair. They also have, I think, a blonde version of this as well as a regular dry shampoo. It's not the most cleansing dry shampoo, but it's actually great for styling because it adds a bit of texture and a little bit of hold to the hair without being like a hairspray. So I actually loved this for kind of a hybrid product for the roots. I emptied another Purology Color Fanatic spray. This is a multitasking spray. It's a leave-in conditioner, a detangler, a heat protectant. They say it has 21 benefits, so you can use it in lots of different ways. It's just a great styling product, and I just think Purology smells amazing. And I've emptied this like four or five times now. It's a really good one. Then I have a product that I love, but the packaging I hate. <laughs> it's the Orbe Power Drops Damage Repair Booster. And this is like a hair serum that you use on the ends of your hair. You can use it when it's wet. You can use it when your hair's dry. You can use it just to add a bit of shine, a little bit of hydration. I like that it's lightweight. It doesn't leave any heaviness behind. It doesn't weigh down the hair. The bottle is really beautiful. It has this dropper that you push down on and it like soaks up product, but the dropper first of all, it doesn't reach all the way down to the bottom. So at the end, I have to like pour it out into my hand. But even more annoying than that is that the dropper um, doesn't soak up product very well. So it's like the, the button goes up faster than the product is able to get sucked up into the actual dropper itself. So you have to either hold the pump as it's coming up very slowly or pump it a bunch of different times. Um, I don't know if that made sense, but there's nothing more annoying than a slow dropper bottle. It just feels like it's taking so long. But I love the product, so it's a trade-off for me. Um, and I do like that it's a hair serum texture that doesn't weigh down the hair. So would love it even more if they upgraded the dropper on this. Then I have the Necessaire Body Exfoliator. This is the sandalwood scent, and the sandalwood scent is very woodsy, unisex, sexy, almost masculine. Um, I do like the Necessaire Body Exfoliator, but I think I like all of the other body products more. So I love the body serum, the body oil, the body wash, the body lotion. The exfoliator, I find it just comes out, it's like a gel that has physical exfoliants in it. I just find it to be a little bit messy. And recently I've switched over to the Soft Services Buffing Bar, which is like a bar of soap with exfoliants in it. And that gives you a more controlled body exfoliation experience. This I find, I love the texture, I love the scent, but it does kind of go everywhere in my shower and I'm finding that with the buffing bar, it just stays like in the bar 
versus going everywhere. So that's what I'm using now. The last product is an Amica conditioner. This is the Velveteen Dream Smoothing Conditioner. Um, Sean and I both use this if you have dry hair, if you have even curly hair, if you have chemically treated hair. This is a really nice one because it gives you, it's almost like a hair mask. It gives you that hair mask rich buttery experience. Conditioners and hair masks in general is a category that Amika does really, really well. I do have a code with them if you're curious. I will leave everything in the description box below. So that is it. Those are all of my empties from the last several months. Obviously I go through skincare and hair care and body care a lot more quickly than I do makeup. I'm sure that's true for all of us because how often do you empty like a foundation? I rarely ever do. But if there's anything you've emptied recently, if there's anything you've been loving recently, I would love to hear in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.